The Haiti WikiLeaks report released this week exposes how the U.S. tried to interfere with and block an oil agreement between Haiti and Venezuela. We're joined now by the authors of the report called the Petrocarib Files, veteran Haiti correspondent Dan Coughlin and Haiti Liberté editor Kim Ives. Dan covered Haiti for the Interpress Service from the United Nations and Port-au-Prince between 92 and 96. He's currently executive director of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Talk about this and the horror of this report. Yeah, I know it's so important what Haiti Liberté and WikiLeaks have done, shedding light on what the U.S. does in Haiti. People don't understand about the, the dominant role that the U.S. plays there. It's the fourth largest U.S. embassy anywhere in the world. The U.N. mission in Haiti today is the third largest U.N. mission anywhere in the world. Haiti plays a pivotal role despite its small size in world history. And what these oil uh, documents show, and especially from a U.S. perspective, when we in the United States, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our community groups, we're raising money for Haiti. We send money for earthquake victims. We send money for hurricane relief. Uh, we, some, some of us with our churches go on missions to Haiti to build, to help build the country. But what we realize in these cables that Haiti Liberté has released along with WikiLeaks is that in fact the main obstacle to development in Haiti today is Washington, is the U.S. Embassy, is what they do to undermine development. And in this particular case with the oil uh, deal with Venezuela, it was, it was Chevron and Exxon Mobil working with the U.S. Embassy to prevent an oil deal that had dramatic benefits for the Haitian people. A hundred million dollars a year for the Haitian government to for spend. For the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, they would save a hundred million dollars a year? It's not just the hundred million dollars a year, which is huge for Haiti. It's ten percent of the Haitian government budget that they used for things like hurricane relief, for schools, for hospitals. The, the cables themselves admit that. It's not quote-unquote corruption. It's for direct support of the people. But and this is because Chavez was offering the oil at 40 percent off uh, the world market price. That's right. The deal is you get you, you get uh, 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 a certain. You only have to pay 40 percent of the cost of the oil up front. 60 percent. Excuse me, 60 percent up front, and the rest on a 25-year, 1 percent a year deal. So you're essentially saving 40 percent of the cost of the oil, and you're using that for direct support to the people, but also it's part of a package where you're getting electricity to Haiti. Uh, and this is something that even the U.S. Embassy recognized. In one cable they wrote uh, how uh, uh, that this that this Petro-Carib deal is very good for the country, wrote the charge d'affaires for the U.S. Embassy in one of the cables. Uh, Port-au-Prince, Gonaïve, and Cape Haitian now have electricity. Because thanks to Venezuela and Cuban technicians. Haiti receives shipments of petro crib fuel every two weeks. Uh, and uh, in addition to the three power plants already in operation and promises to modernize the airport in Cape Haitian, uh, Venezuela's oil refinery project, et cetera, there's tangible benefits to the Haitian people, but Chevron, Mobil, uh, Exxon Mobil, and the U.S. Embassy tried to block this. Well, one of the... the uh, uh, one of the cables talked about that the cube that the uh, the Cubans wanted to replace two million light bulbs throughout Port-au-Prince uh, at a cost of um, four million dollars, but that, that would save Haiti, uh, uh, I think, seventy million annually uh, in electricity costs, and yet the U.S. embassy was opposed to it. Yes, they're completely opposed to it, uh, and it appears simply on geopolitical grounds. And they tell the Haitians this. What's interesting, the ambassador, Janet Sanderson, who's now deputy assistant secretary of state, is going to... She was Bush's ambassador. She was Bush's ambassador. Now she's deputy assistant secretary of state. She's going to Preval and the Haitians and telling them, you all don't understand how important our... Uh, opposition to Venezuela is don't do this deal. Right. Yeah, what's remarkable uh, again is that we have Venezuela and Cuba helping Haiti out. The Haitians say this is nothing ideological. We just want electricity and development for our country. And sure enough, what happens in a matter of years, Port-au-Prince, the main cities, most of the country, electricity production skyrockets. Skyrockets. People now can read their books at night. Hospitals have power. Uh, schools, uh, factories, homes have electrical power that they didn't used to have under 50 years of U.S. development aid. All of a sudden, in two or three years, 
uh, Venezuela and Cuban technicians uh, uh, come in, patch a few uh, uh, power stations together, three of them, uh, bring in the oil supply, a steady oil supply uh, that benefits Haiti, and sure enough, there's electrical power. So thing I noticed that the, the cables that you've reported on so far show they don't paint a very good portrait of Preval. Uh, in fact, that Preval was constantly telling the U.S. Embassy that I really don't like Chavez. You know, uh, we, we I didn't really didn't invite yeah. him. Right. Uh, and, but the uh, the embassy officials are saying uh, he appears so too weak to be able to stand up to his own people on, on issues like uh, a re a reaching a deal with Venezuela. Well, really, what uh, Preval was using was an age-old uh, Haitian tactic, which is called malinage, which is where you say one thing but you do another, and. And uh, he was really playing the U.S., or what he thought he was playing. They ended up playing him because he was he was dealing with both sides. And um, as they say in Haiti, you had two candles for two saints, and, and the U.S. couldn't accept that. They said, you just have the candle for Washington, Ottawa, Paris. And uh, so in that case, that's really why they've gone over to the Martelly camp, you know, who is a completely U.S.-centric uh, um, guy who's, um, I think, maybe going to go after some of the Cuban and Venezuelan projects. So th this is, in essence, a, a secret history of uh, what's happened in Haiti now, for the, because obviously the U.S. Embassy uh, in Haiti has played such a huge role, sometimes a, a bigger role than the actual government, so most of the time. Right, exactly. It's, it's really uh, amazing to see an ambassador pushing around a president and all his officials uh, telling them what to do, that they don't understand this, they don't understand that, uh, trying to tell them what Haiti's interests are. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the epitome of arrogance.